that which shrinks must first expand. That which fails must first be strong. That which is cast down must first be raised. Before receiving, there must be giving. This is called perception of the nature of things. Soft and weak overcome hard and strong. Fish cannot leave deep waters, and a country's weapons should not be displayed. Tao abides in non-action, yet nothing is left undone. If kings and lords observed this, the ten thousand things would develop naturally. If they still desired to act, they would return to the simplicity of formless substance. Without form, there is no desire. Without desire, there is tranquility. And in this way, all things would be at peace. A truly good man is not aware of his goodness and is therefore good. A foolish man tries to be good and is therefore not good. A truly good man does nothing, yet leaves nothing undone. A foolish man is always doing, yet much remains to be done. When a truly kind man does something, he leaves nothing undone. When a just man does something, he leaves a great deal to be done. When a disciplinarian does something and no one responds, he rolls up his sleeves in an attempt to enforce order. Therefore, when Tao is lost, there is goodness. When goodness is lost, there is kindness. When kindness is lost, there is justice. When justice is lost, there is ritual. Now ritual is the husk of faith and loyalty, the beginning of confusion. Knowledge of the future is only a flowery trapping of Tao. It is the beginning of folly. Therefore, the truly great man dwells on what is real and not what is on the surface. On the fruit and not the flower. Therefore, accept the one and reject the other. These things from ancient times arise from one. The sky is whole and clear. The earth is whole and firm. The spirit is whole and strong. The valley is whole and full. The ten thousand things are whole and alive. Kings and lords are whole and the country is upright. All these are in virtue of wholeness. The clarity of the sky prevents its falling. The firmness of the earth prevents its splitting. The strength of the spirit prevents its being used up. The fullness of the valley prevents its running dry. The growth of the ten thousand things prevents their dying out. 
the leadership of kings and lords, prevents the downfall of the country. Therefore, the humble is the root of the noble. The low is the foundation of the high. Princes and lords consider themselves orphaned, widowed, and worthless. Do they not depend on being humble? Too much success is not an advantage. Do not tinkle like jade or clatter like stone chimes. Returning is the motion of the Tao. Yielding is the way of the Tao. The ten thousand things are born of being. Being is born of non-being. The wise student hears of the Tao and practices it diligently. The average student hears of the Tao and gives it thought now and again. The foolish student hears of the Tao and laughs aloud. If there were no laughter, the Tao would not be what it is. Hence it is said, the bright path seems dim. Going forward seems like retreat. The easy way seems hard. The highest virtue seems empty. Great purity seems sullied. A wealth of virtue seems inadequate. The strength of virtue seems frail. Real virtue seems unreal. The perfect square has no corners. Great talents ripen late. Great sound is silent. The greatest form has no shape. The Tao is hidden and without name. The Tao alone nourishes and brings everything to fulfillment. The Tao begot one. One begot two. Two begot three. And three begot the ten thousand things. The ten thousand things carry yin and embrace yang. They achieve harmony by combining these forces. Men hate to be orphaned, widowed, or worthless. But this is how kings and lords describe themselves. For one gains by losing and loses by gaining. What others teach, I also teach. That is, a violent man will die a violent death. This will be the essence of my teaching. The softest thing in the universe overcomes the hardest thing in the universe. That without substance can enter where there is no room. Hence I know the value of non-action. Few things under heaven are as instructive as the lessons of silence, or as beneficial as the fruits of non-doing. Teaching without words and working without doing are understood by very few.
As for your name and your body, which is the dear? As for your body and your wealth, which is the more to be prized? As for gain and loss, which is the more painful? Thus, an excessive love for anything will cost you dear in the end. He who saves will suffer heavy loss. To know when you have enough is to be immune from disgrace. He who knows when to stop does not find himself in trouble. He will stay forever safe. True perfection seems imperfect, yet it is perfectly itself. True fullness seems empty, yet it is fully present. True straightness seems crooked. True wisdom seems foolish. True art seems artless. The master allows things to happen. He shapes events as they come. He steps out of the way and lets the Tao be what it is.